The Prisoner at Derby Jail, a fictional conversation poem based on the trial and public execution of the Nottingham captain, leader of England's last revolt, the Penrith Rebellion of the 9th of June, 1817. The scene is daytime. The dim, candlelit, condemned cell at Derby Jail, November the 6th, 1817. It is the day before Jeremiah Brandreth, Isaac Ludlam and William Turner are to be executed for high treason, levying war against the King and State. Two men in muted conversation. Convicted prisoner Jeremiah Brandreth, known as the Nottingham Captain, and prisoner's friend, Derby Evangelist, Mr. Josiah Dobbs. Brandreth had been sentenced to death by public hanging and beheading. He is sitting perched on the side of the bed, a simple low plank construction. His head is bent forward, as if in prayer or meditation. Elderly Mr. Dobbs is sitting opposite, on another simple bed. He is wearing a heavy winter cape, pebble lens spectacles, and is clutching a well-worn leather-covered holy Bible in both hands. After a moment or two, Dobbs speaks to Brandreth in a beseeching voice. Do now confess your sins. Repent to the Lord thy Maker. There is another yet, a trial never did he see. His sins far overweigh my own. A government spy, he brought us to this pass. Yet swore he, the Luddite oath, never to betray us. And who would that be, my son? The country was to rise with us. And so said William Oliver. At Penridge we would light the path. To freedom we would march. Too late we saw his wicked plot. And lives were done forever. I see your heart is filled with hate. The devil has your shoulder. You need to rid yourself from this. Before the day grows older. We had to march. We had no bread. The masters worked us for their slaves. They ground us to the dirt and stole our pride. No more had we to give. No votes for men. No parliamentary rights. No way to earn a penny more. You are an educated man. You had the chance to voice your tale. Address the jury from the dock. To put your side as man to man. The verdict you might change. Before the spell was cast. Before you faced the gallows call. And had to count this dreadful cost. My defence advised against that plan. They said it should not be. And why might that be so? The case against us was not met. Not proven as in law. We were not read the riot act. By English writ, that is the fact. It could not be high treason. Yet, found guilty you would be. Never could the jury have a say. King's men always win. You think a vassal has a choice? He'd give away his living? He'd throw his family in the cut, and rather slit his worthless throat than foil his good lord's bidding. Confused by many hours of statutory points, yet understanding naught. A guilty verdict they returned, in thirty minutes less. You took up arms, and threatened all. A marching fury off to war. We were no army, just a starving workhouse crew. We had no military might. How could a rabble fight the men of Waterloo? The greatest force the world has ever seen. But you had weapons, swords and guns. Sure, a few rusty guns and homemade pikes. We never meant to fight. Dragoons advanced on Eastwood Town, and we dispersed and fled. Scarecrow soldiers, we were called, and that is what we were. Godforsaken paupers to a man, trampling vainly through the rain. We're all God's children, even the poor man you shot and killed. At Widow Hepworth's farm, Several bullets rent the air. We would get recruits to join us, nothing more. A dreadful accident marked his death, but Robert Walter's killing was not mine. Do you sleep at nights? 
I could sleep well, my conscience clear. Yes, but hark, do you hear the hammer's thud? Can you not hear it? They are building my gallows, and I cannot rest. It goes on all the time. Soon you are to leave us. Tomorrow, in fact. Is there anything you regret? No, I am better dead. I have no more taste for this life. The food is rotten, only fit for rats, and the rancid drinking water tastes of sewer slime. Soon too, I must go. But I implore you to let God's will be done. Their will? You mean the government's? Not God's, not mine. My time is soon forgotten. But my family and wife are left to struggle on, and all the other wives of men. Who will stand up and speak for them? Lord Byron tried and failed. We will remember you. No, I am best forgotten. Save your pity for the hangman and the squires and barons who support this godless crown. Jeremiah Brandreth joins Josiah Dobbs in reciting the Lord's Prayer. The jailer returns and orders Mr. Dobbs to leave.